The final calculation you're going to be asked to do is to work out the percentage yield for a compound. In any reaction, you'll never get 100%, so you'll never have everything that you take, all your reactants, producing 100% of the products that you want. It's always lower than that. So in the previous lesson, where you worked, about, worked out the theoretical yield, when you do a practical, you'll always get less than that. And what you've got to be able to do is work out how close that percentage is to 100. So when we talk about yield, we're talking about the mass of a useful product that's formed. So the theoretical yield is the calculated mass of useful product formed, so what you should get. The actual yield is what you actually get from doing the practical, doing the experiment, and what you collect at the end. So for example, if we had a reaction here with sodium reacting with hydrochloric acid to form sodium chloride and hydrogen, you can calculate that if you have 10 grams of sodium, you should get 25.4 grams of sodium chloride. However, that's not always the case. If you did the practical, you might only end up with 19.8 grams. What you have to do is work out the percentage yield. To do that, you use this equation. The actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times by 100. So let's go back to that previous example. Let's say we had 25.4 grams, which is what we should have got. Let's say we only got 10 grams out. What we do is we divide 10 by 25.4 and times by 100, which would give you 39.4%, which is a very, very low yield. Another question you might get could be something like this. Callum burned 3 grams of magnesium and calculated he should get 5 grams of magnesium oxide. He got 4.2. Give three reasons that could have resulted in a low yield. So not getting 100%. These are those three reasons. So number one, the reaction may not have finished. It may be incomplete. So not all the reactants had converted into products. Number two, losses during preparation. So for example, if I have a liquid here and I want to transfer it into another beaker, there are still some bits of it left in this original beaker. It's always going to be impossible to collect all of that sample. So losses of reactants from transferring between apparatus equipment. And then finally, unwanted reactions. Having impurities in your reactants. So, for example, if you're burning a fossil fuel, like oil, there might be a sulfur impurity in there, it might not just be a hydrocarbon. So when it burns and reacts with oxygen, you might get water and carbon dioxide, which are expected products. But you may also get sulfur dioxide, which would be an impurity, which would then lower your percentage yield. One of the things that has to be taken into account when any chemical reaction in industry is done is the cost of the waste. So for example, if I have three reactions here, all three of them produce sodium chloride. However, only the middle one is the socially accepted one. The very first reaction produces sodium chloride and hydrogen gas. Hydrogen is hydro highly explosive. Because it's highly explosive, it's dangerous, so they don't tend to use that reaction. Plus, adding sodium metal to hydrochloric acid is quite dangerous itself. The second one, the only byproduct, the waste product, is H2O, water, which is nice and safe, nice and sensible. The final one, which is sodium carbonate reacting with hydrochloric acid, you produce water, but you also produce carbon dioxide. Now there are quite a few issues with producing carbon dioxide, which are these. Number one, carbon dioxide isn't useful. There's nothing that in this world that we use carbon dioxide for other than for plants and photosynthesis. Number two, you've got to spend money to dispose of it. If you don't want it going off into the atmosphere for global warming, you've got to be able to find a way to get rid of it, which costs money. Number three, it could have a negative, negative effect on the environment. It's a greenhouse gas, it traps heat in the atmosphere, raising the global temperature of the earth. And then finally, there can be social issues, social issues resulting in the disposal of the CO2. So when we look at a chemical reaction, there are a couple of things that we want. Number one, you want a high percentage yield. You don't want 
much of a byproduct. You want to know that if you put in 10 grams of reactant A and 10 grams of reactant B, you're going to get as close to 20 grams of your product as possible. You want one that's cost effective. You don't want one that's going to give you lots of waste, one that's going to cost a lot of money to make. You want one that produces products that are useful. So if you do create a byproduct, it needs to be useful. So for example, in the previous example, hydrogen, if you could find a way to safely create that, is a useful gas. So that would be a useful one to use. And then finally, you want to be able to easily produce it. You don't want to have to have lots of conditions. You don't want it to go too slowly and you don't want it to go too quickly.